Welcome back, my name's Steve and thank you for joining me on my photography journey. Today I'm going to go on to the second part of my little series on Apple Photos and how to edit with it. So in the first video I showed you how to get started. Some of the basic adjustments that you could do when you're using your Mac to edit your photos. And today we're diving a little bit deeper. We're going to use our curves, selective colour, um, control the metadata that goes into it and then look a bit more at the export settings to um, really push this free app to its full potential. So remember we're not using plugins, we're not using Lightroom, just the free Apple Photos app that you get on any Mac. So let's dive into it. So we've got our picture here. It's another coastal scene from the Isle of Wight. It's a bit different to the one that we used last time, but taken on the same day, just facing in the opposite direction. So let's look at curves first of all. So they are on the right hand side in your edit panel. I've already got that open up. If you need to have a look at how you get into this point, have a look back at the previous uh, video but we've got our curves on here and this allows you to selectively darken or lighten particular areas, particular colors. So let's just reset that for the moment and I'll go through what our other controls are. So remember in here, if you don't see it, you've got this little toggle that you can click on to go into it. And this is our curves. You've got a reset, an auto, and a on off and then for our curves you can affect the red green and blue channels all together or look at the red green and blue channels independently which gives you a lot more control over what you're affecting basically but we'll keep it on the rgb for the moment below that we've got some color pickers so you've got one for a black point one for a middle gray and one for a white point. So if you've got particular areas in your photo that you want to um, select, so if you've got a gray card in your image, for example, then you can use these to select those different points. Or you can select a particular point. So this will allow you to set up any point that you want in your image. So for example, let's say over here, and then you can see that it's plotted a point on your curves and this point if we move it will then mainly affect that particular area that we have chosen there we go and you can bring other ones bring the rest kind of back to normal so it's just increased the highlights in this particular area which was down here so that's where it affected most of all. But again, we can reset that. So one thing that you can do with your curves is increase your contrast in your image. So we can make our dark colors darker. Just by dragging this down slightly, you can see the whole image getting darker there. And then we can make our highlights a bit lighter. There we go. So this S-shaped curve that we've got here is giving us a bit more contrast. Our darker areas are a little bit darker, our lighter areas are a little bit lighter. And then that allows us to have a bit more fine tuning. So similar to changing your um, highlight shadows, contrast and things like that up here in your light, if you remember from last time, but it allows you to do it with a little bit more control particularly if you then want to affect different areas. You can also adjust the curves by color channel, so red, green, or blue, and then that will help you fine tune the tones in your image and get the colors exactly as you want them. And then we can have a look, like we said before, at our before and after, so press and hold on that button. And all we've done is increase our contrast, so it actually looks a lot nicer image already with just that slight adjustment to your curves. So this level of control isn't something that I was expecting when I first started using Apple Photos, but it is here, it's available for you. And like I said, it's included in the free program. So we've adjusted our curves as we want to. So now let's have a look at selective color, which is over here. So again, click on the little cursor at the side. Once you've opened up selective color, you can see here that you can target specific colors in your image. So we've got our red, green, and blue from our RGB, but then you've also got their complementary colors. So you've got yellow, cyan, and magenta. 
Now, because this image is mainly blues and greens, we can selectively affect those. So let's select blue first of all, and then we can change our saturation so we can make things more vibrant like that, or less saturated, so closer to black and white. But what we want to do is kind of somewhere in there, I think. If it's not selecting the parts of the image that you particularly want, you can change the range so it will reduce, it will affect less of the blues or more of the blues. There's not a big difference, but I think our range, uh, remember double click to reset things, our range of one was pretty good. And then we've got a lot of greens on here as well. So I want to affect those. So I could choose the green here or I can select a specific color using this eyedropper. So let's click on that and then choose a particular color. So let's see, uh, let's go to the, the trees and things in the background over here. So we'll click on that. And then we can again adjust our saturations and we can adjust our hue. So we can change the color of these greens a bit. It's very subtle, uh, but subtle is good. Make them more or less saturated as well. And again, that gives us the option to affect particular parts of our image. And it's a similar tool to you'll find in Lightroom with the, the sliders and things like that that you've got in there. So what I like to do is use this to boost the skies, boost the kind of colors of a forest or a landscape. And um, you can see some of the, the sun coming in over here. So I, I could again affect these more orangey kind of colors. We can move those to towards uh, orange and warm it up a bit. So you've got lots of different options that you can use to make changes to, to your image. And if you've got a particular image that you want to keep multiple edits of, you can duplicate the photo, then create different versions. So Apple Photos is non-destructive like Lightroom and things like that. So nothing gets overwritten. You can have lots of different versions of the same thing. So now that we've finished editing our picture, what we can do is go into the eye up here. This is the information panel. So this gives us a little bit more information. You can add a title to it. So Shanklin Beach, Isle of Wight Sunrise. Um, you've got your file name, the date and time that your image was taken, and then all the information about your camera. So this is a raw image. The camera was controlling the white balance. The metering was kind of looking at the whole thing. It was the Apple iPhone 15 Pro main camera, which is 24 millimeters and an f 1.78 lens. You've got your dimensions of the picture, how big the file was, and then your settings from your camera on there as well. You can add a caption, bird flying over the beach and then add some keywords. So you've got beach, sunrise, ocean, peaceful, something like that. There we go. If there's people in there, you can tag them and things. And then you've got your location data as well. So you've got a lot more information there. So now that we've added that extra information, we can come up to our file menu, go to export, and then export our one photo. We then have our different options for this. So I know I covered this briefly in last week's video, but you can choose your uh, file type. You can choose uh, the quality of your JPEG, for example. So let's make this maximum sized. We're going to keep it in the sRGB color space and we'll have it full sized. Um, we want to include our title keywords and caption that we've just included and the location information. And then we can have a file name. So we can use the title. Um, 
we can put it in a particular folder if we want to. So that's an option and then you can export it and it will ask you where you want to save it. So again, I'm just going to save it to my desktop and then have it there ready to do whatever I want to. So put it on Instagram or anything like that. So how do I actually use Apple Photos in my own workflow? The main thing is it's great for doing some quick edits and publishing things straight to the internet or my website when I don't want all that detail of Lightroom or something like that. For social media and the web, the results from editing in here are more than good enough. Sure, it's missing masking and some local adjustments, but for the global edits and the control of the colors that you get with the selective color, it really is quite capable. If you're editing iPhone or mirrorless RAWs on a Mac, don't overlook this. It saves you the subscription for Lightroom and all the information is there. And if you want to go even further into this, the next video in this series, I'll be covering editing on your phone or iPad. And it uses the same tools. They're just kind of optimized for mobile. And that's something that I do quite a lot and um, share on Instagram, for example. So make sure you subscribe to see that video and then follow me on Instagram for more of these editing tips, chatting about cameras and seeing these actual pictures once I publish them. So I hope you learned something today. Thank you for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye.